So um, first, welcome. Um, I am Sharika Floyd, the Housing Programs Manager here at the City of Winston Salem. Um, our new CLC Program Manager, Sophia Russell. You guys will start to get emails from her. Um, and starting next month, she will be taking over these kind of mission or ending homelessness meetings and future meetings as well. Um, so the first thing that we have on our agenda is the appointment of new rating panel members. So our rating panel is a group of seven individuals that are from the community, and they per, uh, start to review and provide feedback and scoring on the federal funding applications, and they prepare a recommendation for you guys to review. So um, the rating panel is currently at five members. We had two members resign. One of them, um, she completed her time. So she did actually an additional two years due to COVID and she has resigned now that her time limit has been reached. And then a second member went on to get a doctorate. So um, due to time constraints, they were unable to continue the rating panel. So the two new members we have, um, that you'll, you guys will be approving for the CLC NOFA, which is currently out. Um, is one is a patient navigator with United Health Centers. She works in the community um, for doing racial work to bring disadvantaged youth and women services, um, basically where they are. Um, she is interested in this work and through a racial lens of how to make work better for those that are underserved. So she is the first. And then the second member is a consultant that has worked previously with some of our local nonprofits around food, um, deserts, and poverty. So she is interested in this work to see how better to provide wraparound services to those that are experiencing homelessness. And that's the lens that she is looking for. So um, first, we would just need a motion or be able to answer any questions for the appointment of those two new members. I would agree to the appointment of the new members. Do we need to make motions, Sharika? Yes, please. Uh, so, so I'll either make the motion or second it, whichever one that falls in. This is Shane. I make the motion to accept. Okay. Trudy, or approve. Uh, um, you wouldn't be able to accept it because you're one of the funded. Oh. <laughs> then, okay. then I make the motion, and we'll look for a second. That'll that'll work. <laughs> and I second. This is Richard. Thank you, Richard. Um, so the CES update. It has been a wild ride for us creating. Um, as you guys know, we did a redevelopment of the Commissional in this Homelessness, and uh, I'm sorry for, of the CLC. So we did a restructure of the governance charter. We started there. Um, from the assessment that was done by Homebase, which is a consultant that came from California to review our um, homeless system, they stated that we struggled with accessibility and um, intake and assessment um, when individuals are looking for services. So basically, people around the community, the feedback that they gave was they don't know where to go, who to call, and there's really not anything in person to help you when you're in crisis. So from this assessment, we decided to do um, move in person to offer in those triage services, which is the coordinated entry system. Um, as of today, um, the CES update, the, we originally started with a partner agency who was going to lead this effort. As of today, we are looking at um, city staff will be hired temporarily in this role until we can get a partner agency to come on board. So um, with those changes, we do want to let the commission know that as of September 1st with the CES, um, there will be city staff who will be taking um, those roles on 
there has been a part a contract process with Team of One to manage the phone lines for us 24-7. Um, they'll be able to manage those for the next year with an option to renew next year. But that will be the changes that will be made effective September 1st. United Way has um, pulled out, so um, the city will be taking on that role temporarily until we can get a part of the So that um, long phone number, that 336-721-9327, you guys will start to see some marks being pulled out to kind of just push everyone to call 211. Um, you'll see some information around um, city staff will be co-located at the DSS office for families and then city with dwellings has partnered with the city to focus on individuals at their one stop location um, over um, downtown. So that is the current structure that we will be moving forward with in September 1st. If there are any changes um, during that time, we'll definitely come back and update you guys. But just to keep the system rolling as a symptom of our effects. So let me know if you guys have any questions about that. Okay. So the next item is a voting item, and this is an organization update. Um, NOFA. So it is the funding time. So um, we are working away on applying for next year's funding. Uh, which is an average of usually $2.8 million for those that are spending to homelessness. With that, a lot of our agencies have changed their mission or changed direction with their new executive directors. So um, this has caused us to have to change some of the recipients of those grants to keep these programs running. Um, HUD provided some information. I'm going to uh, send this out to you guys, but HUD provided um, basically a one pager of what a, a policy that needs to be created um, in case there is a situation like this that occurs. Um, and that does have to be approved by you guys. So I will send that out to you guys because I've just finished it yesterday. So I will send that out to you guys to read and then you can go um, via email. But um, basically what this policy entails is when there is an agency that chooses to pull out from receiving their federal grant, we have a way to place people um, or other ag partner agencies or whoever in that recipient role so that these programs don't stop. Right now we have about three programs. Um, one was the CES program, and then the other two are actual housing programs, so pro um, project-based voucher programs, where the recipients are pulling out. And in order to keep those funds going, we want to make sure that we can place additional recipients in those roles so individuals don't lose access to their housing or their vouchers. So the um, grant policy allows us to, within 60 days, if someone, if an organization is closing immediately or stopping services within 60 days, we can um, go to the commission and let them know of uh, any individual partner agency that may be interested or that has the cap capacity to take on that grant without having to do an RFP. So um, in doing that, we would have to um, provide a transition plan to you guys and also provide information around the type of performance that this um, sub recipient has had, also their feasibility as far as finance, financial feasibility and things like that. Um, if it is within more than 60 days, then the idea is that we would issue an RFP and or a letter of intent to get applications to see who are interested. And then that would do the same process as usual. We would bring those forth to you. Um, after the scoring, and you guys confirm um, which recipient will take those on. So this was created um, just as the year has started with a lot of changes in um, different eight partner agencies not being able to continue the grants, just having something in place that allows the system to continue going um, when we need to put someone in place of 
Any questions about um, what this is? Or, um... Shrika, you said you're going to send this out for our review and we'll vote on it at the next meeting. Is that correct? Um, I am going to send it out for, the, for your review and the next meeting is September. So yes, you will vote on it at the next meeting because there are two projects that are going to fall under this of the NOPA. So we would need to know how to um, keep the funding going for um, this grant season. So this will be voted on in the next meeting. And then this also um, will start coming to you guys. So if there is an agency that wants to move more than 10% of their budget, um, that would start to come to the commission. They would need to get approval from you guys to be able to do that. Um, if they want to change the site of a project, that will also come to you guys. Or if they want to stop any services that they said that they were going to do previously, they would need to get approval um, before then. So, um, and then there's a non-compliance policy. So if there is non-compliance, you guys would have the discretion to determine the cost of business, which may include reducing um, funding for the next CSC competition. But I'll send this out to you guys so that you can review this before the next meeting. Um, and then that way um, we can move forward with what the next steps would be for those organizations who um, will need to find additional recipients. And that was the organization. So I will um, get that out to you guys. Pit count. So the project, the pit count is the point in time count. It is held on the last Wednesday of January. Shane brings out his amazing band and we ride around and <laughs> we count those that are experiencing homelessness and we offer those who are living on sheltered services. So um, it is a huge event. It is required by HUD and we do it biannually, but our COC does it annually just to ever since our, especially since our street outreach numbers, our street homeless numbers increased. It allows us to stay up to date on how many people are um, living unsheltered. So living on the streets, in cars, abandoned buildings, and things like that. So you will start to see a push for volunteers for the pit count. There, there was a street outreach collaborative that you guys approved for us to create. And that street outreach collaborative is the group that will be gearing up to post and to coordinate this year's pit count. So if anyone is interested on um, being a part of that collaborative or even coming out that night to assist, um, whether that's inbound, um, helping people who um, are coming in and handing out uh, supplies and things like that, or outbound and going actually out with the team, let us know. There's also things that we have to do beforehand, such as get donations, um, create a website, volunteer forms, and all of that. So any assistance that you guys are willing to provide is definitely appreciated. So definitely let us know um, if there is any interest. Okay. And then our last announcement is on September 25th um, at the Liberty Street Market. We are bringing back Project Homeless Connect. So Project Homeless Connect has been about, uh, what, Trina, seven years is the last one? Seven, eight mm. years is the last one? Yeah, so, close to it. Project Homeless Connect is a one-stop shop, basically, for homeless services for those that are experiencing homelessness. Um, and it allows them to meet various service providers that are in the area, um, get to know more information about where they need to go if they're experiencing diff different situations. Right now, we have about 25 different service providers signed up. We have um, a shower truck that will be there, as well as some of the medical buses that are around the community. So uh, we are asking that if you guys are able to, to definitely come so that you guys can be a part of this. And um, if you guys have an organization that would like a table, definitely reach out so that we can make sure that you guys have a table. But um, Project Homeless Connect is back with Becca 2024, and we're hoping to do um, this every year or um, just bring this back as a way to provide services to those that are usually um, 
simply not able to assist. So kind of a short meeting today. Um, the only other update that we have is that next time we meet, you guys will be voting on the federal funding applications, which was supposed to happen this meeting, but HUD delayed the release. So um, we are looking at doing two different applications, um, one for um, COC builds. This is a new application that we released. We're looking more into it um, to see um, if it is possible and what project may be possible for this one. This is to build housing. Um, and it's one of the first notes of its time. So that is the first one. And the second one is your annual notice of funding opportunities for COC funds that you guys go on every year. So um, this is the first year it will be by annual. So um, they have moved that process to a biannual process. So you guys will be voting on the grants for this year, which will automatically be approved next year. But we will still come to you guys next year to, to determine based on performance if anyone needs to be decreased um re reallocated to another agency or if there needs to be new agencies added on so um that is going to be the new process effective this year um for those funds so in the next meeting you guys will be voting on all of those um funding allocations any questions before we adjourn Okay, so I'll send out the um, policy change um, so that we can get your approval before we update it in our charter. Uh, once we get the approval, we will update it in the charter and we will be back next month to share with you guys the funding recommendations for your approval for the next year's um, monies that are coming to us for CNC. All right, thank you guys so much. Right. Thanks, Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye.